Thanks for coming by. This is Chris Petrie. Thanks so much for joining along. We're going to have a really fun time. We're actually going to create this beautiful uh, harbor scene. We have some fishing boats, some tugboats. We have a couple uh, sailboats in the background along the coastal area here. There's some beautiful dark rolling mountains along the coast. There's a big, beautiful rock mountain structure here in the uh, right behind in the backdrop. We have smoke coming up from the ships. We have a gorgeous sky. It could be the morning, early morning, or it could be in the afternoon, late afternoon, sunset time. You create your own ideas as you paint this painting. Get into it. Have a fun time with it. I'll cover everything here, A to Z, the whole chock full of nuts information you need to get this one done. And um, we're going to have a lot of fun and a great time. So we'll be right back and um, we'll get started with our sketch. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, we just saw the finished painting and we're going to get right into it here. So we always usually um, go through our um, same techniques and methods and um, our um, fundamentals of starting out our painting. We're going to just get our rectangle going here. I might take a darker pencil here just to get my, um, my rectangle really, really sharp and focused for you. So I'm going to go right along the tape with a darker pencil line just so you can see my, my border of my painting. And this is Arch's Rough Paper. So this is the paper I'm using. It's a, a watercolor um, pad, gummed pad that has 20 sheets and they're all gummed together. And then when you work on it, um, when, once you're done, you just peel off the, the top a sheet of paper when you're done painting and then you have a fresh sheet of paper waiting and when you wet this paper when it dries it tightens back up again so when you have your sheet and you're working on it like this like we're going to do we're going to do the glazing technique we're going to use lots of washes of water and paint on our, our paper what's great about the gummed blocks is once you get your wash on there your first wash with lots of water and you let it dry um obviously when you put your water on the paper is going to buckle a little bit you know it gets that kind of wavy look to it and there's little puddles and things on your paper when you put a lot of water on your paper you'll notice that happens right so when that happens with gum block what's beautiful about gum block is these arches gum blocks is um when you um when you're done painting that first glazing, that first wash, and then you let it dry, whether you use a blow dryer or you let it dry naturally, it'll go back to its original state of being very, very tight um, on the on the gummed block again. So that when you go back to do your second glazings over the top of your first wash you did, the paper will be nice and flat and smooth with not really a lot of bumps in it. Now there might be a tiny little bit of um, bumps on the paper but not a lot like very very little if you the more you let it dry the uh, tighter the paper will get and you won't have any um, buckling of your paper so that's what's great about these I find because I've tried to do other methods of trying to stretch paper and I've tried to um, do other things stretching paper and, and similar things like that like um, pre-stretching it and then then work it takes too much time I just I feel like I just don't have the patience for um, stretching paper and things like that so this is the perfect gum block I use if I'm going to use lots of water and I want it to come out perfect and I want to just have a kind of a carefree get the painting done and it turns out beautiful and no hassles so that's what I'm going to do here use this paper and um, the next thing we'll do we got our we have our border here then we're going to, I'm going to improv this painting, so I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to go for the gusto here, improv this painting. I'm going to do just like a, maybe like a scene, like a beautiful harbor scene with some beautiful water, a nice kind of like 
maybe like dawn or dusk sky, a little bit of like clouds, a mountain in the background, a big mountain in the background, some boats, some sailing ships, and maybe some fishing boats along the coast here. So we're gonna do like that beautiful watery scene with boats and maybe some smoke coming out of the, the boats, the smoke stacks, and we're gonna have a fun time doing this painting. So let's just continue on here. So I'm gonna start out the mountains around here, which is about one quarter up from the bottom of the paper. So if you divided your paper into four um, sections going uh, from the bottom up, and then what size paper do we have here? This overall is a like 10, a 10 by 14 approximately pad. So if I just put the ruler on here and I say, how many inches do we have here? Going up, one, two, all the way approximately nine. So approximately nine inches. So we could divide it into three and say, okay, three, six, nine. I'm going to break it into thirds first. You can kind of see how I did that with my pencil. I'll make it a little darker on here and I'll cover it over so you, you don't have to be bothered by my hash marks here. So um, let's look at it that way. We'll break it into thirds first. One third, two thirds, and three thirds here. And then we'll say that our mountains are going to start um, a little bit below the one third line, so about here. So if we do that, we're going to be fine. And then maybe I'm just going to start out here and do a little distant mountain over here. Okay, the ocean's going to be here. So I'm going to make a O for ocean here. Ocean here. And these are the mountains just a little bit above the ocean. And our first bit of mountains are just a little bit below that one third mark, hash mark. So just a quick, simple idea of breaking your paper down into a few different uh, sections so that you can kind of get a feel for where you want your subject matter. So we're going to stick with this. And then we're going to do some mountains here. And then we'll go up here and across and maybe up here. And we'll come back down this way with our mountains. And that should be good. Now, now we have our distant mountain range in. And then we could take our ruler here. I have a longer ruler here. This is an 18 inch ruler. So this comes in handy because it usually covers most of the, most of the um, things we do here on YouTube. This uh, 18 inch ruler covers, covers the paper either way so that I always have a full ruler here to work with. And so I'll drop that onto the paper. If you want to get it perfectly level across, you just measure up um, on both sides of the ruler. So this is inch and one eighth up from the bottom. And I come over here and I say, all right, that has to go up a little bit, inch and an eighth right there. Then what I do is I take a very, very light line. I don't make it dark at all, just super light. And I go across like this. That's going to be my water line, but there's going to be boats and other things going on in here. So you're not really going to see that water line really, really sharp, sharply in the painting. But I just want to have it there so I know that it's it's not tipped this way or tipped this way. Because the, the water has to be level. You have to have your water line or your boats along your water line. you got to try to keep, keep it somewhat level. You know, keep it level across your painting. You wouldn't want to have... Uh, your water looking like this. So then all of a sudden you're painting your boats and it's going up on an angle. That wouldn't look realistic at all. So that's all. I just wanted to make sure I have that line straight and level across the paper. And all I did again is I just measured up, you know, let's say it's uh, six millimeters, oh, six centimeters, and then six centimeters over here. And then that's my water line. And then my mountains are just a little bit above that water line. And then we have a little mountain range up here, which is a little interesting. Um, you know, I could make that a little larger if you want to make your mountain a little larger. Maybe it would look a little better if it's if it's a little larger, maybe. So I can always lightly lift up with my kneaded eraser if you want to make a little bit of a larger mountain, which might look kind of cool and interesting. Like this, maybe like that. Yeah, that might look even better. So 
so that looks good. And we're just gonna have fun with this. We're not gonna get too much involved in super, you know lots of details. Just let's get the basics of it. All right, so we have our mountain range in the back here, and our mountains across here, and then maybe lower in the painting, we're gonna have more mount, a little bit of a mountain range going across the lower portion of the painting. Very lightly, you can do that one. You just make a light undulating, you know, kind of rolling hills along the coast area. And then we'll do the boats next. So let's do a really beautiful boat here. We'll go across. This is a ship, actually. We're going to do a ship across here. And that should go across to about here. It's a large ship, a fishing boat. And um, let's come up here. We'll make it... Um, Interesting looking there, and it's got a, like that, and then we're going to have the, um, it's going to be a, we're going to have our fishing boat with our um, smokestack, and then you're going to have our, oh, we're going to have our smoke coming off that, like that. That's going to look really interesting going up into the sky. We'll create some really in interesting effects, and then let's do um, let's do another couple boats over here. Let's do another boat over here. Let's do a smaller boat over here, like so. And then maybe this is a tugboat, a large tugboat. That one might be. Just uh, maybe anchored and not really working at this point. Maybe it's just anchored right now. And then maybe there's another boat over here along the water. Okay, that one has another smokestack over here. We'll, so this one will have some more interesting smoke effects here. And another boat in the distance over here along the shoreline. Okay, so we have some boats. We just penciled in our boat boat shapes and then we can always soften them up a little bit with a little bit of a, an eraser and um, there could be another little bit of rolling hills over here like so And I think we're pretty good. We have some, maybe some light shimmering on the water with our watercolor paper. So I'll put a little bit of pencil lines on my paper, just remembering to put, to leave a little bit of white paper when I'm painting this so that you have some of that like kind of shimmering light effect across the water. You'll see how I do that. I'll explain everything as I go here. So let's uh, take a break. We got our pencil drawing done. We did our hash marks again. Remember that, um, we wanted to just get a good start with our painting and not go off track and lose our important lines, which is definitely the level line of the water. That's your most critical line on the whole painting, your level line across the bottom of the page, about a quarter of the way up. And then from there, you can have fun with your mountains. They don't have to be accurate that much, really. You know, you just want to get a good prominent looking mountain here. And uh, the boats, of course, you know, you're um, going to just draw those in. You might look at my my drawing here kind of follow those shapes you can also look up boats online look up uh, fishing boats um, look up tug boats look up anything you want online you can use some of your own ideas too if you want to create a little different look with your boat you can use sailboats in this too but i think this kind of scene is more like a fishing harbor where there's fishing vessels and it's more of like a um, maritime harbor um, painting where it's more like a lot of business going on and fishing boats and 
shipments of goods and things like that. But you could throw a sailboat in there here and there too if you'd like or any kind of boat really for that matter. It's, it's your paintings. You know, you're the artist. You can add in your own creativity as you like. Okay, so never feel like you can't add your own creativity into any of the paintings I do. If you ever want to change my paintings around and do them a little different, please do it. Have fun with your creativity, with your ideas. Do some spinoffs on what I do. It'll keep things fresh for you too. You might sometimes want to do something that you think of while you're working with me and say, oh, I, I have a cooler idea or a more interesting idea. Then you just go for it and do it. And, um, you know, pretty much that's how we do things as artists. We make sure we're always staying creative and we are able to change on the dime if we have to when we're doing our paintings or our drawings. You know, feel free to be light on your feet, keep on your toes do things sometimes creatively, change things around, and you'll find that that really will help you in a lot of um, paintings and compositions that you're working on. If you can just kind of have that mindset of not being too locked down to just one thing, you can kind of, you know, move around freely and do a couple of creative things here and there when you need to or when you want to. And um, all right, so let's take a break and we'll come right back and we'll start this painting. It's a nice, beautiful glazing technique painting and you're going to have a lot of fun doing it. Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, we're getting started again. And a couple things first, um, when I start out my paintings, especially when I'm doing my glazing paintings, um, my glazing technique, you'll notice that I use glazing technique a lot on my channel. And also I use the alla prima method probably most often, but I do use the glazing technique a lot too. And I use them both in combination. And that's why I kind of, I always try to mention if you can learn both kind of separately and and then when you learn both separately and understand them sort of separately, the glazing technique and the alla prima method, then you kind of, after a while when you're painting, you just use them interchangeably and you really don't really make a big deal of it in your own studio, in your own place that you're painting. And when you're painting on your own personal paintings, uh, you know, you're the artist, you're working on your own work really, unless you're out there doing like teaching or you're on YouTube or you're teaching on other classes or, or you're teaching privately or things like that, you know, you might be thinking more, if you're showing somebody something, you might be explaining it like, you know, in that way where it's kind of like two separate techniques. But if you're just working along with me and you're just mostly just painting and you're not really doing teaching or anything like that online or so, so on and so forth, you're really going to just use them interchangeably after a while. So you really won't really, you know, really be thinking of it too much. You'll just know, like, you'll look at a painting you want to do and you'll say, oh yeah, that's a painting. I need to kind of get the whole paper covered with color first let that dry and then go back in and finish it. And there's other paintings you're going to look at and go, mm, now I'm going to go in there and start my darks first and my, just start painting and going all at one time with my painting and not really making large washes of a lot of water and paint on my paper. So you'll kind of get that feel as you go. For, you know, it takes numbers of years, you know, maybe two or three years of working with both the glazing technique and the alla prima technique, you will get the hang of it and you'll just use them interchangeably. You really won't be thinking about it too much. It'll just be intuitive. You'll just kind of do it out of a force of habit or just your normal working procedures that you do. But the thing I wanted to mention here is definitely, you can see I got crystal clear water. So when I start a painting like this, all my paintings when I start out, I'm always starting out with fresh clean water like this and I change my water quite a bit when I'm painting. So, but especially on a glazing technique, you wanna have fresh crystal clear water when you start the painting. So let's do that. Let's start the painting and I'm just going to take water and splash it on the paper. And what I'll do is I'm not going to put it everywhere, but just when I start it, I usually put a lot of it right on the top of the paper, right at the very, very top, like the first third. So the first third of the painting, I have a lot of water on there and I cover the whole thing like that all the way across. But then once I'm done with that top third, which is where this hash mark is here, then I will intermittently put water on, fresh clean water. So I don't necessarily put it everywhere once I get below that one third line approximately. And then I just try to get the water on there, here and there. Get the paper with fresh clean water, crystal clear water. Then for the... Um, for the water down here, I'm going to wet the paper quite a bit. 
I'll wet the whole paper for the bottom where the boats are and the boats too. And then we have a really good starting point. And then I'll add a little more water again up top, just so we have some really good bit of puddles that are going to kind of flow down as we work. Then I'll say the next thing I really like to do sometimes is kind of get a feel for my colors and I'm going to use purple. Purple here and then purple and brown here. So I'm going to make a purple and brown. Brown kind of grays down the purple a little bit. So I want to have a little bit of a and, a, and some blue. So I'm going to kind of mix all those three colors, purple, brown, and blue. Maybe I'll use my brownish mixture up here mostly. And then some orange too, up here maybe. I'll go all the way up to the top with the orange. I want to have some warmth in the sky, some orange. So that's some orange up there. Okay. And then also I want to do some green, green and brown. So I'm going to do some blue, green and brown. I'll just get some greens in here with brown, like that, some brown, some orange, like that, some brown, some orange, some green. Just trying to mix colors, get it looking good, brown for that mountain color, orange, brown and uh, a little bit of uh, purple like that. We want some purple in there too. Okay. And, and then some blue over here maybe. Some blue. And then some of that blue maybe like that. So that's my main colors that I'm going to use. You can always try your colors out on a separate piece of paper before you start putting it into the painting, just to kind of look and see what they look like. Rinse off your brush. Maybe get some of this color, see how this looks. Okay, for the mountain, looks good. Then the orange wash looks good. All right, so I feel like these colors are looking pretty good for the painting as I'm just trying them out on the paper. I, I think they look pretty, pretty good. So I'm gonna go with that. And this is blue, okay. Okay, and purple, there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna take my purple and orange and start up here. And I'll just take some of that orange paint and get it up in the sky. And I just wanna make some powerful strokes like this. We don't wanna take a lot of brush strokes onto this page. We wanna go with minimal brush strokes, just kind of throw it on like this. Then take some of the orange, flow some of that orange in there into the purple and blue. And over here too, same thing. Purp we want orange up here. So we want this to kind of like have a real nice blending of orange and purple. And then over here, more orange. So I'll carefully do some orange here. Let the water flow around. Don't hassle about things, just enjoy it. Get the, so I'm gonna get some orange into the water and some purple into the water. Just to get some first wash on there. We're gonna go over with a second wash, okay? And now um, you can always take a tissue if you see puddles that are flowing and not looking good. If there's a couple pu puddles on your paper, you can gently tap them up with a tissue. Take a tissue and gently tap up any unpleasant looking uh, puddles that are forming that are gonna kind of give you a problem. Don't let that happen. As soon as you see some flooding puddles, lift them up gently and that's all you have to do and it'll come, the puddles will lift right up with your tissue and it won't harm a thing. Let the other stuff just be as it is. Okay, now we will go over this wash with another wash on top and that's where we're going to have um, a lot of fun. I will get a little bit of that green wash here. Undercoat of this. 
of the mountain. We'll go over the mountain again with a darker wash when it dries, but I wanted to go on with a little bit first here. And it just helps to kind of make things blend together. Okay, all right, that's it. That's all you have to do for your first wash. Simple as that. Mix all your colors first, pre-wet your paper, get lots of water on your paper, and then you start working your colors into your painting quickly with big strokes. Use a large square brush, the biggest one you have. I usually use this one or this one here. These are both pretty good size, but this is a little better. Even if you can get a little larger of a square brush than this, it might be better off. Uh, I'm trying to look for one in my studio here that I can show you that would might be a little better. Yeah, something like this might be a little better. This is the Princeton Art and Brush Company. Again, it's the same as I always use with my Extreme Beginners. This one I bought uh, separately, though. This doesn't come in the package, I don't believe. It might come in the package, actually. One inch. One inch wash brush. Flat brush. Square brush. Like this. That works great. So these two sizes work a little better than something like this. This is a little bit undersized for this size painting. Just to keep that in mind, it makes it a lot easier when you have a larger brush and you're just really getting the washes done quickly and you'd be really toughing it out and having a hard time trying to get your washes on quickly with a smaller brush like this, which is the 5 8 inch brush. So the 5 8 inch flat brush, that's a little bit small for this size painting, which we said was about a seven, 7 or 8 by 14, approximately. All right, so let's let this dry 100%. You can use a blow dryer. You can use let it dry naturally for two, three hours maybe. It's up to you. All you gotta do is when you come back to work, just make sure it's dry. Take a look at it. You shouldn't see any shininess to it. It should be all dry 100% and uh, go from there. Okay, all right, so let's have fun here. And I always mention, if you haven't subscribed on my channel here, please hit the subscribe button, it's so simple. You just click on the subscribe button right here on the right-hand side below the screen. And all that, all that means is the next time you're opening up YouTube, you'll see my videos uh, in your uh, YouTube uh, channel on your page. So you'll just know that I made a new video. And this way you can keep in contact and keep working along with us here. We're doing watercolors, everything watercolor in my, on my channel here on YouTube. And we do all kinds of really interesting content. So we're doing beautiful paintings like this, you know, water scenes, seascapes boats, we're doing flowers, we're doing mountain scenes, trees, we're doing still life, flowers again, you know, all kinds of interesting things, portraits, figure paintings. Um, we do everything watercolor here, so you know when you come to my channel, you're always going to have a lot of great material to work with and practice on, and that's what you want to do. You just keep practicing, keep working with us, and if you don't like a s subject matter, never worry about it. You just watch what I'm doing. You'll learn a lot of just interesting information watching me paint a painting. And then um, the next time you might find that you might find, you know, find something better you like to paint. Like you might like flowers a lot, painting flowers. Well, maybe you're not really interested in doing something like a boat scene like this with mountains and things. But even if you're just watching the painting, you're going to kind of pick up the terminology we're using. You're going to pick up all about the colors and the palette, how to use techniques like using your tissue to lift up puddles of water. You know, all the cool things that we learn here week after week, month after month, and year after year on my channel, that's all going to be to your benefit when you're learning watercolor because it's a lot of things you, you really have to learn. You learn them a little bit at a time, you know, and you'll eventually you're really going to have a good um, handle on painting and watercolor. But it does take some time, and there's a lot of little nifty tidbits of information that you can learn along the way. And when you do those things and you learn those little small tips and things and little tidbits of information, those add up to big payoffs because then you're really, your painting is going to look a lot better because you kind of know how to fix things up a little bit here and there. You know how to kind of get around a problem that might happen because you know this little tip or trick to do the this, that, and the other thing. So these are all good things you're going to learn. So stick with me here and uh, we'll be right back and we'll finish up this painting. We'll do some darker washes over this. We'll get our smoke in, our clouds in a little more, and some water. Um effects here too and it'll look beautiful and we'll be uh, back in just a second.
Okay, hey, let's get back to work now. We're actually, uh, painting is dry. Painting is completely dry. That's the perfect time now. We're going to go back in. Now, the fun part about this is, since we did all of our work in the beginning of getting all our colors all situated in our palette, now it's just a matter of <clears throat> remixing a few more colors that we are going to... So we're going to use the same color mixes. So that's all you'd want to do is go back in and uh, get some of your color mixes going back in, you know, back into your palette. I use, I'm using fresh, clean water now, so I emptied my, my water pail. Now I have clean, fresh, crystal clear water. And then I'm going to go back in. I have my muddy, muddy purple there which is burnt, uh, the dark brown, or you know, brown and purple. And then here I rinse my brush off, and then I go over here, and I use some of that blue and purple. Purple and blue, and a little bit of the brown too. Just a little bit of brown in there. Okay, now here's another blue, which is a little more a green, greenish blue, Prussian blue, sort of a Prussian kind of blue look there. Then um, here we have our greens with some brown. So green and brown. Green and brown. A little bit of orange. And that's our mountain color. So now we just remixed our colors again so that we have plenty of color to work with here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll definitely go in. Let's do our mountains, our main mountain here, which is the a mixture of the greens, brown, and a little bit of orange, and then a touch of blue, too. And we're just going to go down here. And I'll start about here. I'm using a square brush, and I'm just going to want to go up like this and just get, I want to get the, the wash on the paper. And you can see it's a little bit of a darker. I mixed a little more paint and a little less water, because now we're going over the the second wash is going to be a little darker than the first wash. So that's where you kind of, now you start to get the feel for your glazing techniques. Um, you want to keep your brush a little bit drier. So you want to rinse your brush off, dry off a little bit of the water on a paper towel or a, or a tissue, then go in and grab your darker paint. And you can kind of see how this paint's already looking a little bit darker, which is we want it to be a tar darker tonal value right now. We don't want to go with a really, really light wash like we did on the first glazing. We want to go darker now. So let's do that. And we're going to paint around our boats here, our uh, fishing boats and so forth. And like this. And we'll just get those washes on. And I'm going to paint again around the boats. These square brushes are really great. You can use a smaller square brush too if you like to go around these smaller details of the tops of the boats, but I can get it pretty good and accurate with a larger, um, this is a Sterling Edwards uh, square brush or flat brush. Works phenomenal and I'm use this one, I've had this one a long time. And there's another smaller boat over here. So I'm just working all the different boats that I see that we drew in before. And we're going to go over with some darker washes as well on the uh, coastline where there's some uh, rolling hills along the, over here. Okay, so, okay, that's good. Fine. Perfect. Now we're going to get our round brush. And um, maybe I'll use a little bit of a larger round brush here. I'll use a Da Vinci Maestro brush. And I want to get that blue. Blue, a little bit of brown. And blue. And a little bit of purple. And I want this to be darker. So you can kind of see how I'm going with a darker wash. Not as much water on this second wash now. And that's where we're going to do these little bits of darks here. See the, the darker bits of wash I use here? And you can also add in a little bit of black. I use that black very sparingly. Uh, that can sometimes be a little bit quite dark. So I'd add just a tiny little bit of black there. 
Let's mix up some more of this greenish brown. But really we're working with the purples and the blues now. So I'm going to go over here, purple and blue. Okay, and just let's try to get the purples and the blues in. A little bit of black, just to darken it up a bit. And there we go. And we got the bottom of the water. Along the bottom of the boats, like that. Okay, so we got that there, and we're just going to keep working our way across using the darks to kind of like outline the boats. Because there is a, a rolling hill back here. So let's use that for our advantage. We're going to use that rolling hill, which is the, dar the darker blue. You can even add some green in there if it looks a little more pleasant and pleasing to have some green wash in that blue. Probably looks a little better, but it is, we're going to try to keep this, we're not going to go with too much vibrant color. Let's kind of keep these colors grayed down. This is like early morning, we were saying before, it's kind of like an early morning or like sunset. So you're not going to see an extreme amount of like really exciting uh, high chromatic color. It's going to be more Colors are going to be a little more grayed down, subtle looking. And there we go, we have some more like this, like that. Like, okay, then I'll mix up some more with my larger brush now again. I'm going to change out my water. Again, this is a lot of steps, I know. Keep clean water. Uh, so I'm pouring some fresh water into my bucket, my water pail, because now I'm going to go back in and mix some more purple and purple and orange like this, with a little bit of brown in there to just tone it down a little bit. A little bit of orange in there too. That looks good. A little bit of that blue. All right, I think that looks good. Okay, now what I'll do is I want to start getting in some, before I do this, actually I wanted to do that, and then I want to start getting in the bottoms of the boats here. Like this. Some of the boats are lighter. Like this. Okay, so now let's keep this really simple. All right, we got our boats in there. Now let's rinse our brush and let's get, before I do anything else, let me, let's use some of, let me clean a spot on my palette. So let me use this spot here. I wanna clean out one section of my palette and I wanna put in some titanium white like that, titanium white. And then I want to just go in there with some water and make some smoke colors. So that smoke there, white, with some of that purple in there. Um, another good thing to do is have a secondary palette, a uh, secondary water container. When you're using Chinese white or titanium white or any type of chalky looking white, you might want to have a place you can do your first rinse of your brush there first and then go in and get your second rinse on your regular pail. And the, and the reason why that is is because once you start mixing in a white brush that has white on it into your regular pail, it's going to affect everything else you do for the rest of the painting. So try to have, when you're using white 
for smoke or white chalky white colors for effects try to have a secondary um, rinse um, uh, bucket container and then you'll find that it'll really work out good. So I have that all set up. I rinsed off my brush with that. Now I'm gonna go in and get this purple, which already has a little bit of that white in it, but I don't care, that's gonna be all right. Um, we want this a little chalky looking. Okay, and then I'm gonna just really go for it and do a couple really good clouds along here, like this. And I just go in fast with this. Like this. And then a couple this way. Like this. Just some good, good, good movements with the brush across. Then over here, a little bit of, and then some fresh water. Just some fresh water over here, just to blend that over here a little bit. I'm moving fast. You can take your time with this painting and stop and go and hit pause as much as you need to. And then, uh, I think that should be fine. I don't want to keep overworking it. That's, that's good. Then I'd like to use my chalky white. Once I wet this a little bit over here. So I take some fresh clean water where these two boats have their um, engines running and we're going to have the uh, smoky effect. So let's do a little more like this and then we go in with the smoky effect like this and just add in that bit of chalkiness there and we'll do the same thing over here. Put the, the uh, titanium white or Chinese white you can use too. That works perfect. And then we just funnel it right down to this smokestack here. Then I'll use a little bit of splashing maybe. Take some of that white and splash it like this. A little bit of an interesting effect like that. And then our other purple here, we want to get this over here. Okay, so I wanted to get some of that purple under here. Then I want to get a darker purple along the bottom here. A little bit of brown in there too. Got to muddy it up a little. Maybe a little bit of this too. So I get a little bit of that darker wash there and then I take fr fresh clean water out of the pail and I just blend it like this. And then as we talked about before, try to leave, take a dry brush, rinse your brush off, dry the water off on a tissue, and then see if you can get some, some of those effects with the, the shimmering of light across the water, like that. So I put a little bit of darker paint on my paintbrush, dry it off a little bit on the tissue so I don't, have, I don't want to have too much paint on there. And then we just do that, maybe a couple like that. Kind of blend that in a little bit. And then we can have a little bit of uh, details here on the boats. You can just use your brush and put some details on the boats. this, a couple details across maybe, like that. And if you find stuff is dripping, just lift it up with the uh, tissue. If you find there's some unpleasant looking splashes, you can lift them up. And then I make sure I make my bottom of my painting um, I want to make that good and dark, like this.
and then you can even take another um, bit of darker paint. You can mix up a little bit of a uh, tiny bit of black, blue, brown, blue, purple. Same colors we've been using all along, a little bit of black. And then if you mix that up, a little bit of brown. Mix that all up. Uh, make sure you dry off a little bit on a paper towel or a tissue. And then you can roll your brush around a little bit like this. You roll your brush around like that. You get a nice point on your brush like so. And you can go in and even do more details on this here. Um, you can lift up a little bit of paint. And you can go in. And we're going to get our smokestack like that. like that. So we have our smokestacks there. And if you want to wait till it dries, let's do that. Let's let, let these dry. A little more smoke here. Like this. A little more of that white. Again, if you have any little unpleasant spots, you can lift those up with a tissue. They come right up. There you go. You can blend in a couple of things with a tissue. You can blend in with a little bit of white up here. With a tissue, you just blot up a little bit, blend in some things. And again, we're going to come back in just a few minutes. I'm just going to be a little more careful with my smokestacks here on my boats so that I can get a nice um, you can always go back in and get a little more white and do a little more details with the black um, smokestacks on the boats. We don't want to kind of lose control right now at the end of our painting while we're doing this smoke effect. So the smoke effect looks great but if we sort of let it get out of control it can give us a problem so um, okay, I think we're good. Let's let this dry. And then once this dries a little more, we'll go in and do a few more details to the boat windows here and then the smokestacks and a little more smoke just once it dries though. And we'll have it, a, we'll have, this will be complete. We'll have a beautiful completed painting here of a gorgeous harbor scene, fishing boats, cruise liners, maybe you have a couple tugboats, some fishing boats, even if you want to put in a sailboat or two. It's your happy painting. You do it the way you want to do it. Just use the basic themes and the basic ideas we have here with the colors and the techniques and the methods, and you'll be fine. And um, we'll uh, just, we'll come right back in about two seconds and we'll finish up the um, final details of the uh, painting for the boats, actually, and we're, we should be good. All right, we're getting right back into it here to finish up our details of our painting. And uh, did I mention just recently, I might have mentioned to you, my brand new book is out, Watercolor Methods for Success. Uh, chock full of tons of great information, lots of beautiful paintings we have in here. Some of these paintings we did together already on YouTube. So you're going to see some oldies and some great ones that we've done before that we've painted together and some new ones too as well. Lots of directions. We have some figure painting if you like to do figures and pets. And then all kinds of interesting lighthouses and ocean scenes. Gorgeous uh, landscapes. And we have flowers and still life and just a lot of beautiful paintings. I cover all my detailed uh, exercises for practicing. Um, I cover all my palettes, my colors. Um, I have all my brushes and pencils and pens. So you'll, you'll have everything in one location if you want to get this. It's a great, fun book to have um, on your uh, coffee table for people to look at. 
to peruse through, and as well, it's a great work manual for you as well as you're working in watercolor. You'll have all my uh, key information in one location in my book, so I'm hoping you'll pick that up. It's on Amazon, and how easy is that? You just type in my name into Amazon, Chris Petrie, watercolor, methods for success. Or even more simple, if you just type in Chris Petrie, watercolor book, you'll see it there too. So, it, you know, if you do a quick search on Amazon, you, you'll see it there. And I hope you'll pick it up, and let's get back to our painting. So, here again, we said so we wanted to kind of do our final details. And um, we wanted to let it dry, though, first. So, the thing I wanted to do was... Um, take some black and brown and purple and blue, maybe a little green, just to get a really nice dark dark. Some more brown, black. And then what I'm going to do is I want to just get these uh, small um, chimneys on the, on the tops of the boats a little better so that we can kind of see them a little better like that. And then once we do that, we'll let that dry a little bit there. And we'll do the same thing too. We'll take the same color we just used. We'll use our Prang Oval 16 stock brush we get with our set. And we'll just do a little more details on our um, on the windows of our boats. Like this. So we just want a couple more details on the boats here. And they don't have to be a lot, just a few here and there, like that. And I think that's good. And this one in the back, it's very, very minimized there. It's just in the back a little bit there. And um, there might be a few more. Um, we can use our needlepoint brush. And we'll get a few more. Um, a little bit of blue, purple, orange. Needlepoint brush gives us a little more of a fine point. Maybe there's some other uh, some other boats here in the harbor. So we'll put a few of those in. Just a couple maybe. There's a couple maybe sailboats and things like that in this uh, harbor scene. So we could just put a few of those in too. And we can even do a little bit of highlights too with some of these. But if you just get a few of these little vertical type shapes. That'll be good. And you can even... Um, I'm going to make sure though on this section here, we want to make sure now that we don't dilute our white paint because I noticed when we used our titanium white it diluted quite a bit when we painted it into the scene. So what you want to do is you want to have a, a good... I put a good bit of um, titanium white here. I squeezed it out into my palette and I made sure that this section here is dry completely. And then you want really thick titanium white with almost zero water in it, just enough water to so you can get it onto the brush. And that's how we're going to do the the, um, the smoke here like this. So then all we do is do this, scrub on a little bit of smoke with very, very little bit of water. Then I come back in with a damp brush like that, like that, and then just kind of blend it in a little bit, but we want to keep it really looking realistic here, like there's some real smoke coming out of here. I think that's good. And then over here, same thing. Thick, thick titanium white paint though. Chinese white would work too, if you have that, or any kind of white really might work. And then this way, now we can get that really good look of that smoky um, smoke billowing into the sky from these beautiful uh, maritime ships that are here. Maybe they're shipping some goods. Maybe there's some fishing boats, some large fishing ships here. But we just want to make sure we capture that real good feeling of action and excitement in the harbor here. Some smoke coming off the boats. You can add a little bit of black um, to that smoke. Too, like so. You can add a little bit of black, which gives it that kind of smoky look. Just a little bit, and then you can mix it around like that. Just 
There you go. And then you can blot up a little bit. You can even take some tissue, roll it up, and then maybe even blot in a little bit of... Let's see if we can do some blotting, maybe here. We can blot it this way. Like that. Then we can take our brush with some water and just kind of... Kind of just... Maybe there's some wind. That'll look like a good effect, right? We're, we dampen up our needlepoint brush, and we we're, it's like wind. We'll take that we'll take that white paint and kind of wisp it to the left here, so you feel like there's some wind here. And I think we took a little more time just now to do a few more little details, like you just saw me do, and that can really make it look a lot better. The painting it looks a little more exciting. I'll do another little bit of, maybe there's a little bit of light catching some of these sails in the distance here. So there's some sails. We can add a little more darker darks under the ships a little bit. Here and there, a little bit of dark there. And I think that looks absolutely uh, excellent. Let's uh, call it a day now. Not too much overworking, but I think we do have a really good look here. Uh, everything looks fine. We have a little bit of that light shimmering on the water. We have our smoke effects. We have the wind drifting. So we're making our wind drift with our sm smoke here from the ships coming in. They're working. They're having the, a great day. They're doing some fishing. They're doing some shipping of all kinds of great products for everybody. And uh, I think that's about good. So thanks so much for joining me and doing this wonderful painting. We're going to do much more paintings um, in the future using these same exact techniques here on my channel. Lots of glazing techniques. We're going to be doing a lot of a la prima painting. So um, we'll see you on the next video. And again, happy painting, everybody. Enjoy the journey, and we'll see you very soon.